The statement, Thomas Jefferson had a secret family in Vermont, is interesting. But it is not revisionist, since mainstream history can still coexist with this fact. The textbooks do not need to be rewritten. On the other hand, the statement, Thomas Jefferson didn't exist, is revisionist. If this statement were true, the textbooks would indeed need to be rewritten. Experts are often resistant to considering revisionist hypotheses. Rewriting textbooks is humbling work. I believe this tendency of experts to disregard revisionist hypotheses is currently holding back aging research. Aging is the increasing probability of death of an organism from internal causes. Many plants and some animals do not age. Sequoia trees, for example, grow stronger and hardier with each passing year. No law of biology states that an old body cannot be stronger and healthier than a young body. So why then do most organisms age? And why is there so much variability in the lifespans of different organisms? One answer to this very important question is the aging as an adaptation theory. This theory posits that aging was selected for by evolution and is the result of programmed self-destruction pathways governed by biological clocks. That is, we age for the same reason we go through puberty. Aging is built into who we are. It is generally acknowledged that the sudden death of semelparous organisms is the result of active self-destruction programs. It is also generally acknowledged that the timing of development is the result of active developmental programs. That is, it is generally acknowledged that the body knows when it is time to mature, and, in the case of semelparous organisms, the body knows when it is time to die. However, almost all biologists refuse to consider the hypothesis that for organisms in general, the body knows when it is time to die, and grows more and more prone to death as a result of active self-destruction pathways. The rejection of the aging as an adaptation theory is on revisionist grounds. Entertaining this hypothesis requires rewriting the textbooks on evolutionary biology. Mainstream biology is founded on the belief that evolution could not select for characteristics that increase group fitness at the expense of individual fitness. Their reasoning is that no mechanism of group selection has ever been discovered. However, no mechanism of the electromagnetic force has been discovered. How does one particle know it is positive? and another particle one million light years away is negative, so that the two particles attract each other accordingly. No one knows the mechanism of this attraction, and yet the particles attract each other nonetheless. Similarly, no one knows the mechanism of group selection, and yet we age nonetheless. Suppose there is one bacterium in a lake, and this bacterium reproduces by binary fission every 10 seconds. One bacterium becomes two, two becomes four, then eight, and so on. If in 30 days the lake is completely covered, then 10 seconds before complete saturation, only half the lake is covered. If you can talk to one of those bacteria 10 seconds before day 30 and tell them, in 10 seconds the entire lake will be covered, all resources will be consumed, and you will all die at once, the bacterium would laugh at you and would not believe you. Half the universe has yet to be explored, but in 10 seconds, the population of bacteria would indeed double. The lake would indeed be completely saturated. All resources would indeed be consumed, and everyone would die all at once. This is the fundamental problem of replicating life. I believe this is the problem that aging was designed to mitigate. We age in order to mitigate population extinction events caused by exponential growth. It should then come as no surprise that the hazard rate for humans is exponential. Exponential decay is a particular type of decay. Cars do not exhibit exponential decay. In fact, the only man-made machines that exhibit exponential decay are the ones specifically designed to do so. The human body grows more and more prone to mortality exponentially. This suggests that we do not wear out for the same reason a car wears out. Rather, aging is built into us and is the result of active self-destruction programs designed to mitigate exponential population growth. Currently, all aging research works under the hypothesis that old bodies are worn out due to accumulated damage. 
An admirable amount of effort has been dedicated to developing methods of clearing this damage. However, these methods have not yet yielded any extension in maximal lifespan. The aging as an adaptation theory, on the other hand, posits that old bodies are not worn out. Old bodies are, in fact, functioning very well. Just look at how well they are running the self-destruction aging programs. The aging as an adaptation theory suggests the alternative research program of determining the mechanism of the body's biological clock. We must discover how the body knows how old it is and how this clock can be turned back.